Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again, and indeed it is time to see the return of the Channel Hall of Fame. Now for NHL 19, there, there were some debatable players, I would say, especially from the series early on in the year or in that game's life cycle, where we could have seen Hall of Famers added to our prestigious channel list, of course, where we keep track of all the top players from all the series that we've had, the players that those, you know, that made those series what they were. And a lot of you guys were asking if we were going to be bringing that back, and obviously, we are. Now, of course, the Mariners series, we retired on top as Stanley Cup champions, thank God. I was tempted to do another season, but when you look at who wants an extension and who doesn't, nope. Not even going to bother with that nonsense again. We won the Stanley Cup, and we will leave it at that. Now, in terms of who should be up there for the Hall of Fame, I mean, it's tough to say. Like, Dominic Grosek won us the Cup, but I don't think he's this legendary goalie. It's tough to say, though, because he was great in that one Cup run. And the good thing is with this team as well, I don't really think there are any players that we got rid of that we have to really think back to remember. Like, oh, don't forget them. So Grosek, I mean, might have a shout. Zane Trafford, I mean, 531 points in 820 games as a defenseman. Very, very consistent. Was crucial to our success in this last postseason run. I'd say he has a decent shout. Terrell Montgomery at 26, 355 points in 656 career games. Also very good in the playoffs, fairly consistent. Could also have a shout as well. Anybody else there? I don't really think so, unfortunately. And then forward-wise, Alex Holtz. It's tough to say he is going to finish his career with over 1,000 points. We're not going to see that happen, though. He has 1,066 career games with 943 points in the playoffs, nearly a point a game, and of course he was phenomenal as we needed him to be in that last run. I would say he has a shout. The, the problem is, with everyone I've mentioned so far, I think they're more qualified for the Hall of Very Good. Whereas Joachim Kamel, I think, has a good shout for the Hall of Fame just outright. I mean, what he has done, especially, you know, this past run in the playoffs, but over point a game in the playoffs, such a clutch performer. I think he has a slightly better shout, or at least the best shout thus far. Brody Appleby, though, arguably the best pure playmaker I've ever seen in an NHL game. 476 points, 424 of them are assists. And again, in the playoffs, pretty damn good, especially in this past run. And that's going to be the really interesting thing here, is to see just how many of these guys you know, go down as, you know, in the hall of very good. You know, Nasir Kostopoulos, had there been more time, maybe. Uh, he was pretty prolific in the playoffs for the short amount of time that he had. I think the one guy who has the best shout, I mean, Vyacheslav Grigorenko, I think he goes down in the hall of very good, as opposed to the hall of fame. I think the main reason we're bringing back the hall of fame is for a certain somebody, and unfortunately that's not Boris Nazarov, Although he is the longest tenured member of this team, of course. In the playoffs, he was decent. The reason why we brought this back was Paul Cato. And what he accomplished this postseason. 16 goals in 23 games. He has 21 goals in 30 career NHL playoff games. So how many of the Mariners deserve to be Hall of Famers? I'm not entirely sure. I think I'm going to add pretty much everyone that I've mentioned thus far to the list. You know, to the poll that you'll be able to find in the description. And we'll see who ultimately makes the Hall of Fame from that team. But, in my opinion, you know, you compare some of them to some of the other players that we had for years. And I can't help but think most of them end up in the Hall of Very Good as opposed to Channel Hall of Famers. You know, they'll, they'll be the names that we remember, but they won't necessarily be the names that we always think back to and just be like, yes, that guy is one of the best players that we've ever had in the series. As opposed to San Jose, where again, we ended as Stanley Cup champions, despite how anticlimactic that last episode was because of fucking me losing power two minutes before the episode's over and I lose the whole goddamn file. Still so frustrating. But the first player that really comes to mind for a potential Channel Hall of Famer, 
It's not Patrick Marlowe, it's not Brent Burns, it's not Joe Thornton, it's not Martin Jones. That would be Eric Carlson, of course, who might be the only player from either series not currently still on the team that I think deserves a shout. I mean, we had guys like Bjorkstrand and Everly, but they're not Hall of Famers. They were just really good players. Henrik Gustafsson for the Sharks. I mean, I don't know. Four seasons, not exactly elite in the playoffs, but did see us to back-to-back cup finals and won one of them. Is he a Hall of Famer, or is he just in the Hall of Very Good? I'm not entirely sure. Defensively, of course, Eric Carlson gets a shout. I don't know if Thomas Shabbat does. He was here for two seasons. He was great in the two seasons he spent as a Shark. Great in the playoffs. Maybe he does deserve a shout. I mean, helped push us over the edge and took over the mantle that Eric Carlson left behind. Josh Morrissey was tremendous this season and, of course, was one of the big reasons you know, the stability he provided in the back end is one of the big reasons as to why we won the cup. Same with Cal Foote, who only spent 21 regular season games here, but then was phenomenal in the playoffs. Is that enough to make him a Hall of Famer for this series? I don't know, but obviously crucial towards our success. Uh, Passy released the crack in Hacken. I mean, would have been great to see what he ultimately becomes. I don't know, maybe... I, Unlike the main series, I feel like this one has a chance for me to actually be interested enough to go back on Twitch and then, you know, whatever we do, bring it over to YouTube afterwards because uh, I want to kind of see what Hacken's capable of, I gotta be honest. And then, of course, I mean, there could be a joke nominee like Tim Heed or Hayden Flurry, for that matter. Not as if Hayden Flurry wasn't tremendous when called upon in the playoffs this year. Three points in five games. And then forward wide, uh, David Pasternak. Who's to say? I mean, four seasons here, 83 to 98 points in all four seasons. He's over a point a game as a pro. Stepped up this year as well. He'll be remembered for this series. Is he a Channel Hall of Famer for that? I don't know. Same with Cole Sillinger. Solid. Very solid. There was that one season where we sent him back down after 51 games, but solid option. I think ends up in the Hall of Very Good, despite being... A pretty decent playoff performer. And then you have someone like Jean-Luc Foudy and really just the third line. You know, Foudy, Perfetti, guys like Heinen, and of course, I mean, Ellison and Gregor. All really good players. Like, we don't win a Stanley Cup if Noah Gregor isn't, like, the perfect fourth line center. Is that enough to get him into the Channel Hall of Fame, though? I'm going to leave that up to you guys. Steven Stamkos spent the same amount of time here as Cal Foote. But he was tremendous, and that veteran presence is arguably what led us to the Cup. Tomas Hurdle, his name will be on the list, one of the few players to stick around for the entire series. Did he do enough to take that next step and be a Hall of Famer? I don't know. Timo Meyer, of course, the other player to stick around for basically, or you know, for the entire thing, not even basically for the entire thing. Multiple 30 goal seasons. Decent in the playoffs, 100 points in 124 appearances. And then there's Vitaly Kravtsov, who you could argue out of anybody else, you know, the goal-scoring presence that he brought to this team for the past two seasons, is that, you know, is that the biggest reason as to why we were finally able to win? So I'm going to be very intrigued to see what the results are to this. We'll have a follow-up episode, of course, where we reveal the results It's tough for me to say, though. Should any of these guys be Hall of Famers? Are they just the type that belong in the Hall of Very Good? I mean, again, the best thing to do is to leave that up to you. And actually, uh, I didn't show you guys at the end of the Shark Series. We just left it with that cup celebration. I didn't show you guys the final playoff stats for the team. Stamkos, Meyer, Pasternak, Kravtsov, and Sillinger were all phenomenal. And again, a lot of things changed about the team in that series as you can see i mean again like flurry played five games you know fratton ended up finishing the playoffs on the team 902 for gustafson and in terms of the awards i can't look at it yet because the ahl playoffs aren't done cool well screw it we'll look at it let's do this we will sim ahead the flames fired their coach the day after the playoffs end that's just a ruthless the stockton heat win The Calder Cup, so who knows? Maybe the Flames are going to promote from within. But the final season's worth of awards, there you see it. 
We finally did it with the Sharks. Individual awards. Peter Reynolds won the Art Ross and the Hart. Thomas Shabbat continues the trend of Norris winners in San Jose. That is an insane streak that I can't imagine will ever be matched. Eric Carlson won so many goddamn trophies. And then immediately after, we see Thomas Shabbat. I, I said it earlier in this video. Took over the mantle for where Eric Carlson left off. And he truly, truly did that. So again, there will be polls in the description where you guys can vote on who exactly is a channel Hall of Famer. There's going to be a lot of polls in the description. But you can vote. It is up to you. And thankfully, we are going to be able to look back on both of these series on a positive note. We end both with a cup. Of course, with San Jose, it's a bit disappointing because that you know the team had a chance to be a dynasty and not just win one and be done. But thank God we finally won something. 